Hello, everyone. I hope you are enjoying the workshop. I'm going to present my work, uh, an overview of my work uh, of the creation of an in vitro bone model. Let me first introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Pilar Alaman. Uh, my background is industrial engineering, but now I am my third year of PhD um, and I'm working on the M2BE research group at the University of Zaragoza. And I'm going to present my research about the stem cell osteogenic differentiation in microfluidic devices. What is microfluidic? Microfluidics is a technique that allows us to work in microvolumes, uh, which means uh, a lot of material saving, work space, and also wastes. But also uh, it allows us to control the environment uh, quite thoroughly. Uh, besides, in the way we work here in our devices, we work with collagen hydrogels, and this platform provides a physiological matrix for cell culture, for static cell culture. Uh, in this way, if we achieve a reliable in vitro model in microfluidics, uh, it may become an intermediate step between the traditional in vitro experiment and in vivo studies. Uh, this tool also uh, may be useful to study, for instance, the effect of different stimuli such as uh, growth factors on bone remodeling, bone regeneration, and also to be a potential tool for uh, a study um, bone therapy testing. So in this work, we use stem cells derived from adipose tissue from now on ADSCs. We differentiate them inside uh, culture flask in 2D, in two dimensions, sorry, uh, while they are expanding in in, in the flask. And then we see them inside, inside the microfluidic devices in a 3D static culture. We incubate these 3D cultures over uh, 21 days and we study the fully, the fully osteogenic differentiation by measuring several markers that we set um, according by bibliography. So the evolution of those markers uh, will determine the state of the culture. In the picture you see in the right, um, you can see uh, a, a sum up of the batch of experiment that we that we did. Okay, first we incubate in two D, and then we move. We see the culture in three in in three D. Uh, I want to comment a little bit uh, quickly uh, some results the, that we get. So the the first conclusion that we that we got uh, was that a previous differentiation time of the cells was required to obtain a fully differentiated model. We assay four different lines. Uh, first, uh, we, uh, we use as a control these stem cells with expansion medium, uh, and then we assay the other three lines with osteogenic culture mediums. Once, undifferentiated cells in osteogenic medium inside the devices, and then previous differentiated cells. So uh, in the picture in the left, uh, we can see uh, the cells in two dimensions uh, that we perform an alizarin red staining, which binds calcium ions and we can see this calcium ion concentration is bigger and bigger on, over time. Then in the left, we see the, the, the most widely uh, marker expression for osteogenic differentiation, which is uh, alkaline phosphatase activity. So we know for bibliography that a maximum expression of ELP uh, matches with the um, uh, differentiation uh, start. And then when, when these um, activity keep constant and reduced is while, uh, while the culture is uh, getting mature. Uh, then we also saw that the collagen matrix uh, gel mineralizes over time. Here uh, we can see in blue the cell nuclei, in red the cell cytoskeleton, and in green we can see uh, little dots uh, which are um, calcium in the matrix. So in the left, you can see a 3D reconstruction for a cell-cell connection, which was also a morphological marker of this culture maturation. And in the right, you can see an orthogonal projection of a 50 microns uh, zeta stack confocal image, where we can see uh, these uh, little uh, green dots, which are the, um, the matrix uh, that is mineralizing. Uh, and just to uh, and just to finish a little bit my my work, I I wanted to comment a little bit of future potential application that we can where we can apply our model. So this model of uh, mesenchymal stem cells can be used uh, to study the effect of biomolecules such as growth factors or even to drug testing. 
um, and see how these uh, biomolecules affect to relevant processes like migration or differentiation. But also we are working uh, right now in the creation of polymeric 3D printed scaffold where we can apply our model, where we can put our hydrogen with, our, with uh, the cells, and we can study the uh, interaction between these biomaterials and the culture in terms of cell proliferation, cell migration, and also the polymeric degradation. And also we are working on a ready designed bioreactor so uh, to study the effect of this um, a mechanical stimuli, which is uh, the fluid flow, uh, to study the same, the same parameters. So uh, this is all for my part. Uh, thank you very much for um, my whole team. That is a, a huge support. And thank you all of you for, for listening.